I bet you're using the wrong extension cord. And no, I'm not talking about the ones just missing the ground clamp, me included. Sometimes. I'm getting better, okay? It's all about the wire gauge or thickness. Since extension cords are rated off the allowable amperage to be drawn or run through them, that's the only thing we care about. As you can imagine, if you're pulling way too many through a small wire, yep, it's gonna get hot, heat up, melt, and or catch fire. Thus, that's why you have breakers or fuses before that happens. Well, guess what? You get a thin 16 gauge wire and your fuse box is not rated that low. So this will burn up before you trip it on the breaker. Just remember this, more amperage, thicker wire you're gonna need. Side note, first one to ask why I have so many extension cords will get a comment with a golden star. So where do we go from here? Well, as mentioned, every cord has a rated or has a certain amount of amperage it allows safely. And the great thing is every cord should be marked. If not, you should probably toss it. Well, that's all fine and dandy. Everybody's seen that on the cords or seen it on the packaging of what gauge wire, but how do you know how much amperage you're actually using? Well, likewise with every cord, every appliance or tool that you use will have a nameplate with some very important information. Yes, there's a whole bunch of extra hogwash on there that you don't really care about warnings, but they will always have one or two things on there, typically the voltage, either watts or amperage. If amperage is already on the nameplate, it just gave you the answer. All you gotta do is check a chart online or some of the packages even have the rated amperage of the cord itself and you're done. This blower is pulling 5.7 amps. The cord's rated for 15 amps, so I am more than sufficient on this guy. I guess this might be a shorter video than I thought. I'm MechMaster, subscribe, and let's just get real. Most cords look like mine, and lots of appliances will give you watts, not the amperage. So we've got to do a little math. First, let's actually see what we're looking for on the wire itself. Most of the times, it is abbreviated with AWG. That's just uh, gauge. And some will have a number of just like 12.3 as an example. That is telling you, you have three 12 gauge wires in that. Most wires are gonna be either 18, 16, 14, 12, 10. I, I don't know, they only like even numbers for some reason. If you have a thicker wire than that, then you probably are dealing with 220 or higher voltage and maybe a shop type situation. This still all applies to you as well. For those appliances or tools that give you wattage, not amperage, well, we just need a little formula called Ohm's Law to figure it out. Now, it's a really simple equation, just three variables, that's it. Trust me, stick with me for one minute and you'll feel like Einstein at the end. And here's the variation we're gonna be using. I equals P over V. Amperage, that's what this entire video is all about, so let's find the other two. We should all know the voltage we're running on here, at least here in the US of A, we've got 110 regular house power. Sometimes we bump it up, you know, with the stuff or stuff. <laughs> Sometimes we bump it up with the stove or dryer to 210. Um, you get old European and like three quarters of the other part of the world, you're just 220 normally. Now, when you hear like 110 or 115, 120 volt, guess what? It's all the same. It's just a nominal type rating for the lower house voltage. The only thing you gotta worry about is don't plug your microwave into a 220 plug, and then you'll be good. And then power in watts. Yep, I'm sure you've heard of it. So it's the other variable, let's find it out. Oh look, I stumbled upon my toaster that gives us the power in wattage. So let's find the amps. Amps equals watts over voltage, so 850 over 120 equals seven amps. If we wanted to run this with an extension cord, pull that chart up again, 16 gauge will do just fine. Now there are thousands of charts online and this is one of the better ones that I've seen, but there is a lot of information here that you might be wondering about, like what the heck is this voltage drop? Well, over a long distance, you actually lose part of the voltage that you put into it. It's, it goes out through resistance through the cord itself. So you gotta account for that, especially if you're running um, tools or welders type things that really need all of the voltage possible. Speaking of welders, I did want an extension cord just for my lower voltage, 110 volt type. So I pulled up the nameplate. It's got a 23 max amperage 
pulled up that chart and voila, 10 gauge will do just fine. Side note, everyone knows how the gauge system works, right? Higher the number, smaller the gauge or thinner in diameter the wire gets. Got another example, you've got a shed that's 100 feet away, you wanna throw your microwave in there. So this is microwave, it's 1500 watts. Let's divide that by the voltage and we get about 12.9 amps. So at 100 feet, you're gonna need the 15 amps. Remember, you always wanna round up and that is gonna require an eight gauge wire. These cheap lamp cords are the worst because they actually have less insulation than a normal extension cord. And come on, they're just begging to have multiple appliances hooked into them. Strand lights or Christmas lights are actually pretty safe because they've got a fused connection. Fun fact, United Kingdom is actually the only country to require every cord to have a fuse on the end. One last thing and then I'm ending it. So let's say you go out and you look and you go, oh crap, I've been using the wrong gauge wire, but I, it doesn't even get hot. I haven't tripped anything. Everything still seems to work. Why is that? Well, it's because you're not using it continuously, nonstop. Let's just face it, majority of tools or appliances are kind of a stop and go type situation. A saw, you're just gonna be doing the cuts, but then it's resting for actually a majority of the time. But I want you to be aware that if it is a certain situation or you're plugging multiple appliances or tools into one, that they all need to be added up and rated for the wire. I'm Meg Master, we'll see you next time.